Hey friends, Chris with Inside Hardware. Today we'll be looking at PCB mounting on a new board. Fun project. This is a blue ESR meter. Um, you might know more about that on your own. There's a lot of different videos about that, which is neat. Um, so you can find a lot of different kits online. They make for great gifts if you have like a techie husband or someone like that, like me, who likes this kind of stuff. Um, normally we're desoldering to do repairs and then reinstalling. This is starting from scratch. Um, sometimes people, instead of going to full production, will do these little kits. So they uh, assemble different packages from the supply company, um, and they send them directly to you. And then they'll have a couple, couple custom fab uh, container stuff there. And then they do do a custom board. This is a, I guess it's a single sided. There's no circuitry on the on the top layer, um, but they did go ahead and do a nice screen print here. So there's a uh, guide online and that's usually the case there's an online or PDF guide that you can download and follow uh, the screen print here is pretty detailed um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and, and, and the side of these on and it turned out to be a useful tool um, save money by buying it uh, like this and mounting it myself um, I always start with the larger components and work my way down and start with the unique ones didn't like about this kit is they did mix together multiple components that aren't necessarily labeled like some of the resistors I have to actually look up the color codes for them but that is not a big problem uh, there's a lot of ways to do that but um, other than that a lot of the uh, parts are fairly unique so they can only go in one spot so I've already gone ahead and inserted these LED numeric numbers they have 10 pins each five on each side per number I'm going to start soldering those in, and then I'm going to get started on the IC, ICs, um, and then go from there. Alright guys, and for starters, I will be using this roll of um, solder coated in flux. Um, it's a 0.8 millimeter, so it's actually a lot thinner than usual, which I prefer. I'm just going to start going through all these pins. So I've gone ahead and touched up one or two pins that look like they could have used a little more connection just to make sure that they're all solid. Um, they all look pretty good to me. You don't want to spend too much time. Uh, each lead, you can transfer heat up into the component and it could damage them. These are LED diodes, so I'm not too worried. Um, and I didn't spend much time on them anyway. But transistors, sometimes they can get damaged or resistors um, if you put too much heat on them while you're soldering them in. So you want to learn to move I want to say quickly but at a, at a good pace next I've put these IC uh, placement holders notice I didn't put the ICs in I'll save those for uh, when I'm done that way they don't get damaged during the build but um, this one here is bi-directional so it doesn't matter what side you put it in I think it's got 8 8 that's 16 pins um, this bottom one's the same it doesn't matter what direction it goes in but you'll notice there is a bit of an indentation on this bottom left corner. And on the back side, that bottom left pad is square versus uh, having the egg shape as the other ones. So we're going to go ahead. Now this bottom one is holding itself in place quite easily, so I don't have to worry about it falling out when I get started. But this top one is totally loose. So I will be pressing on the back side of it when I first get started. And the general recommendation here is to do the opposite corners first, just to hold it in place and then work your way down all the pins. That way you don't get started on one end and it lifts up on the opposite. Uh, so while pushing down on the back, top left and bottom left, that little square pin. So it's got a square one on this side too. Hmm. So I have the two opposite corners of that IC holder in place. One right here and one right here. And now I can go ahead and follow up and finish the rest of those pins. 
So sometimes you'll be installing little jobbies that you don't even know what they are. Um, like this little blue guy. Uh, it's measured in megahertz. It's got three prongs. Don't know what it is. Went ahead and put it in because it was very unique. Couldn't go anywhere else. But um, one thing to remember is if the legs of the component are the same length, then they're usually, and you might want to verify this through experience or looking stuff up online, they're usually bidirectional. It doesn't matter what way you put it in. When you have a leg that is longer than the other, then yes, they are directional. And usually, uh, either on the screen print, um, there's no screen print on the back side in this case, um, but you do want to know what direction they're going in. Um, now on the screen print, for some of these circle capacitors, there's a little plus and a, and, a, and a lack thereof symbol, so that would be your negative. And then capacitors are read, every, every component is read differently. Uh, in this case, I know that the shorter leg on a capacitor, on an electrolytic capacitor, is your negative side. And there's also that little white stripe with a negative on it, a minus on it, to confirm that. Um, so all I'm doing is reading the side of this capacitor. It says 100 microfarad at 16 volt. Um, here's a 100 microfarad right there. Uh, it doesn't mention the voltage. That's normal. Uh, I'm not seeing any other uh, 100 microfarad. Oh, I have two of them, so there should be a second place. Oh, there's one right here behind that. Uh, is this another one? I got three. So I have one, two, that one's 22, that one's 10. Oh, here's another 100. Um, so let's see in my stash here, I got a, a little bit bigger one, 22. So that one probably goes right there. It looks like it may not have been sized right on the uh, screen print, but that's okay. Should be enough room there. Here's another electrolytic one. Oh, this one's 22. It's a smaller one that looks like it would be sized for that one. Uh, let me make sure I'm reading these correctly. Hmm. Well, might be worth looking at the uh, manual online and just verifying stuff. Here's another 10, but it's a lot smaller. So, pull up the instructions and work your way through them. All right, so going by the schematic, I have lined up all the capacitors that were in the kit. Uh, and it's actually to all the circle uh, circles on the uh, actual board itself. The other ones are just uh, wire connectors, or I believe some of them are LEDs. But, um, so... Other than that, I want to mention this one capacitor. They did put it on its side. They figured it might protrude a little too, haul, too tall for the encase, encasement. Um, and then the plus sign, the positive terminal for this capacitor is smack in the middle of the uh, screen print. So I don't know what side is accurate. But I was able to look at some photos online for this specific build and see that indeed it is on the right hand side. And now you'll notice these are the first components that have extra long uh, legs. I will cut these off after I solder this set of uh, one, two, three, four, five, cap six capacitors. Um, I'll go ahead and snip these with some pliers um, and then continue from there. So to hold these in place while I'm fidgeting around with the soldering iron and the board, um, to have them not fall out of place, I've gone ahead and bent the legs so that kind of helps hold. Um, ideally, an item like this, your little third and fourth hands there, would be helpful and you just clip your board in um, and they can act as additional hands. The problem I have is I've lost the alligator clips and need to replace them. So this is kind of useless to me now. So I've gone ahead and soldered these in. They're still kind of warm. I'm going to go ahead and bring in these oversized pliers. Um, it's best to have a dedicated pliers just for these kind of things. Not sure where mine are right now. And just trim off these extra leggings. If no one's ever taken the time to teach you how to solder properly, there's a video I will put down in the uh, description below. And that's actually what I was taught was kind of not accurate. And so I ended up watching all the videos from this online training. It's from the 70s, so there's some aspects of the flux that are outdated. Uh, there's some components on the board that are no longer used. Um, but nonetheless, the, the teaching is really great. They grasp the concept. It's by a company uh, from the 70s that was teaching how to repair boards. 
and um, I, I think it's 70s or 80s, and um, I think they're out of business, uh, or they got bought out, but so the videos are free domain online. Uh, very helpful tool, especially the first and second videos. So next, moving along, I'm going to install all the transistors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, transistors, although they are all three the same length in terms of their legs, they uh, are very much directional. PNP or NPN are the two main different categories besides their actual measurements. I'm trusting the screen print to literally follow the circle is cut off and as well on the board the circle has a cut off. And so for all of these exact ones I'm pushing them in. These three holes, though the holes don't align with the pins, they will split apart a little and I'm going to keep them about that distance above the board. So we've installed all the transistors. You can see this board is starting to look like a circuit board. Um, gone ahead and make sure they're all secured. They're all roughly, they sit about an eighth of an inch high off the board. Uh, I've already snipped the legs so you can see the pads that we still haven't used, pads that we need to work on. Um, some of these pads are kind of small. I'm going to go ahead and let my soldering iron cool, cool off and I'm going to switch tips out to a smaller tip to get into some of the smaller pads and transfer the heat better to the pad while soldering these on. All right, we made a little more progress on the board. We have our two blue LED, three millimeter LEDs up on top. Don't forget these are backlit numbers as well. So I think that's not sure what those are for yet. And then you'll see these uh, orange yellow looking ceramic capacitors. One, two, three, four. Next I'm gonna work on our diodes. And I have a Good number of resistors to dissect color wise. Fortunately, the PDF is fairly helpful. All right, nearing the end of the board build, I've been working on the resistors and diodes and some of the smaller components that are non directional. Diodes are directional, resistors are not. They usually come open like this, like the diodes. Um, little note about them their colors, they usually have, I doubt this will focus, they usually have four colors to them. Uh, gold and silver signify the uh, percentage of tolerance of the error that they can be within range. Um, and then the other three colors represent their value. So if you don't have a packaging that tells you what the resistor is, in this case, I had like 10 individual resistors of different values, uh, all in the same Ziploc. All I knew is that they're all 5%. So I've lined them up with the gold on one side and have the other three bars and there's apps out there that are free that work really well can tell you what their values are. Uh, the schematic for this that came with this board tells me uh, the color uh, code assignment with the value. And then the board has the values marked on the screen print on top. And that's how I can match them. And the schematics also have a numeric assignment that I can then match with the numeric assignment of the board that is on the PDF to just to make sure that the location is accurate. So this is a little more tedious and boring part. I guess that's why some people do it first. The schematic recommend doing do it, do it, doing it first. Um, but soon we're about to assemble it all together and that's the more exciting part. Thank you. Well friends, quick note. In my excitement I realized I did should have read the instructions, but um, so these numeric LEDs actually are sitting sitting around top of the board as all the components well, I'm actually supposed to seat them a little bit higher, and so to do that, this kit gave me these rubber pads. They have a sticky tack on one side, they stick to the board, and they're at the right height, so that the backhand side of these LED uh, numeric value things uh, sits right on them. Um, and the reason for that being is that when it is closed in its encasement, these numbers will not be up against the... Uh, exterior surface so there'll be some glare in between which at this point I'm willing to live for uh, the big problem was actually just a few moments ago uh, completely unaware I had already trimmed all of these uh, excess pins here to be low profile like the rest so had I not I could have desoldered them and removed the whole component and added in those bumper sticker things 
raise them up a little, but oh well. You learn as you go. Well, friends, all in all, a very fun build, and I haven't even turned it on yet. I've just realized as I started recording that I never installed the two ICs, and you'll see the slots are empty. So I'm going to do that next. My 9-volt battery, unfortunately, though I did put one aside for this job, it is not with me right now, and it's too late for me to go get it, to test it out. There are two variable resistors here that I believe I need to read the instructions and figure out how to set them. So we'll be opening it back up once I close it for the night. Um, it came with some test resistors and what have you. I guess you're looking for certain values. Um, got some extra stickers and signia to put on the top when I close it. And I left the rubbers in here in case I decide to replace these LCD or LEDs. Um, mucked around with these alligator clips for a while. So I believe they have a good connection there. Clean this up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos of me playing with this as an amateur. Um, trying to repair TVs and test out bad components and going from there. Or if you're just curious to see what else I post because I don't do just electronics repairs. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.